So here's my approximate routing location. Not very elegant for the blow-off valve, but that's really the only spot that I have for it because you want it to be far away from the mass airflow sensor. I went ahead and disconnected this again just because I'm going to have to blow out the intercooler. Um, it's got a lot of aluminum shavings in it from all the cutting, so I, uh, I'll be doing that hopefully once it's you know, running and has coolant. I reconnected the lower radiator hose. I have the new 45 degree fitting on here and it's unfortunately not uh, in a great position yet. I will still have to rotate it a bit. It's just touching the exhaust manifold. But I do think it, oh, there you get the idea. So I have to reach my wrench up there and tighten it now. But at the very least, it's not touching. So I'll be able to route the stainless steel line around the exhaust manifold and to the dump, which is imperative for uh, at least somewhat longevitous use. <laughs> much better so we have some actual clearance uh, some of the center section bolts uh, apparently did not tighten down yet so I went ahead and did that uh, exhaust basically all the v-bands are still pretty much loose right now uh, the actual uh, wastegate dump that's all closed up uh, this is the first time I'm gonna try to fire it up with at least a semblance of an exhaust system on it um, it should fire up just fine. Make sure it's a neutral. Sounds good. So Brexit actually has a little bit of notable progress here today. Um, the front nose panel is back on it, but it's only sitting on right now. That chunk used to reside right in there. Intercooler actually fits pretty well uh, already. Might need a little bit more adjustment yet. Still a little bit of room that the intercooler could potentially move as well. I uh, epoxied a Dash 8 AN fitting into the valve cover. And I've got this little Dash 8 hose I made up. This is a check valve, which I don't really need, but I have it. Dash 8, Dash 8, Dash 8, down to the Moroso oil cooler. Dash 8 to Dash 10, that just vents the atmosphere. What did I say? Catch can, not an oil cooler. Oil cooler is in that box, probably won't use it right now. Uh, it has coolant in it. I got a expansion tank from an 89 325i. Unfortunately, the chassis is not really set up for it. Normally, there's a little stud here and a bracket down there so we'll have to do something about that um, as well as mounting the catch can mounting the power steering reservoir uh, lots of tidying up in that sense to still uh, take care of the throttle body i found out was held in with two finger loose 10 mils so that's sorted now has four fairly snug ones so that's a huge upgrade uh, driver's side right side of the car Turbo's back on, downpipe is back on. We clearanced it even a bit more. It does still rub on the steering coupler ever so slightly, but it's to the point where I think I can tolerate it. So that'll be doable. Still needs the throttle cable. That's sitting in the driver's, sorry, passenger side floorboard. That's a E34 525i right-hand drive throttle cable. 
downpipe is tacked onto the turbo now. It's tacked all the way back. At some point, I'm going to take it back out, probably do one more round of clearancing on the second piece of the downpipe down here, and then take it back out, finish weld it. Then we should be good. Uh, the wastegate actuator rod no longer hits. I have massaged the fender well of the car enough. Outlet also fits. The uh, new oil drain is on. I'll show you that bottom side as well, but no longer interferes uh, with the exhaust manifold, which is super groovy. What else top side? Might be just about it. That's still, that's quite a bit for one night. You guys know how slow I've been on this car the last couple of months trying to find motivation. So let me pop it up in the air and go over the one or two things that I've done underneath. So since last time we were under here, nothing really looks too different. Um, this fitting, same fitting, uh, obviously just has a new line on it up to the bottom side of the turbo on that 45. Again, you can kind of get a better, better look at it not hitting anything up here. Um, all of the exhaust studs that were on now have nuts and they're tightened. There's a few up there that you see that do not have studs. I didn't really notice that before I put it on, which is my bad, but it's a thick enough flange where hopefully I won't encounter problems. I've got three on the top on the front here. I've got a few on the back as well. So I think it'll be okay all together. Um, here you can see the downpipe and kind of how it's collapsed, but it's collapsed kind of facing this way, not this way, so not ideal. I think once I pull that out once more, I can get it clearance to the point where it won't, it won't be uh, interfering anymore. If it does, again, it's not too bad. There's that two inch or 44 millimeter tile style uh, block off. That seems to work pretty well. This V-band down here. Uh, I think everything else back you've seen. This is a three inch muffler and I have two and a half inch exhaust. So there's the pie cut or whatever you call that. <laughs> Still has to get welded up, but this car will look a little bit poverty, but as long as it's fast, it should be good with me. But yeah, she's, she's getting very, very close to being a real car again, which I'm looking forward to. dash four up here it's leaking pretty substantially so I may have to get a new one of these 90 degree fittings and or a new one of these little uh, feed plates up here that's just a flange compression fitting so chances are there's got to be a nick in it or something like that but little stuff lots and lots of little stuff 